Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are the team from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and we are very happy he to be here today to share with you the case of IRL. And my name is Teresa. I'm Sherry. I'm Kathy. I'm Cindy. So um, IRL is a startup enter enterprise that focuses on the um, research and development of crit critical infrastructure. It is only a company of very short history. It's only started, it was formed four years ago in 2009, and it only got its first contract with Guangdong Forest uh, Academic, Academy of Forestry uh, in, 2000, in 2012. And it's, uh, presently the only material product is the uh, for forestry detection application and system. And um, so as a, as a startup company of, of very small scales, I wish to expand and enlarge its business. And of course, it has a lot of choices. First, it can uh, geographically uh, expand their business into, uh, uh, according to the founder of, of the company, they have uh, 10 focused provinces in mainland China. And also, they have some target tar target markets in uh, Asia Pacific, like Malaysia. Also, they would like to to consider to in whether to enter the some developed uh, country market like Australia. Also, they have the some second choice of changing their business model into uh, add the capacity of maintenance and installation into their own business. Um, that is, they uh, they would like to use this kind of uh, this kind of method to deal with their pressured relationship with the SIs, and also they may have their third option to enter the other fields of uh, critical critical infrastructure. For example, they can enter the uh, fields of oil and gas and transportation, and also their current surveillance system have um, also other usages like in the field of uh, roads and bridges, and also power board, uh, border surveillance, and uh, that is the mainly the three three options they may have. And uh, also there's a lot of factors that we need to take into consideration when we try to make the decision for them. And so we did sort of SWOT analysis. For, exa for example, they are uh, very strong in research ability and also um, the founder, especially Kevin, have very uh, strong socially responsibility also IRL has a very close responsibility, a very close relationship with the government in China. So that would be a key, um, it would be a key advantage of them. And but at the same time, it is a very um, startup company, a very s small in scale. Currently, they only have 12 people, including both full time and um, part time. So it will be very limited for them if they want to expand their business. And uh, for the for the uh, outside market. The Chinese forestry segment is set to be uh, worth of uh, one, around 1.4 million, 1.4 billion. So it's a very uh, it's a market full of potential, and also uh, about its com uh, threats with competitors. They have three million, mainly three competitors. Uh, two of them they only provide short term, um, uh, a short distance um, surveillance system. So that will not be a th threat of them. Uh, the other competitor, the, uh, it's, it is the leading uh, researcher of the long distance surveillance, but as the uh, IRL also developed the same kind of stress, so it will not be a very good, a very big threat. So um, we also identified some case, key questions, like it is mentioned in the case that whether they should uh, borrow uh, nine, uh, seven billion US dollars in one goal, and also, also whether they should uh, do the S SI capacity there by themselves, or they should should they uh, enter development markets? There will also be these questions will all, will all be summarized into our detailed uh, detailed plan for the for for IRL. So in the rest of the competition, my teammates will present you our very detailed plan. Uh, we we would like to demonstrate in different stages. We divide it into three stages. Uh, first is the short term, that will be the following five, year, five years, and then the medium term, like uh, following 10 years, and the long term, that will be 10 and 20 years. So I will pass time to Kat. Thank you, Teresa. As Teresa has just mentioned, our plan in the future was divided into three parts. So let's start from the short term. First of all, our short term, the time horizon is the five years. 
And we have four detailed strategies as listed here. First of all, we will develop the existing technology that is the ILLs, IRL system. And uh, two, there are two specific areas for further development. First of all is the UAV upgrade. Actually, our competitor, the Dajiang Innovations Technology Corporation, they have already developed a new technology about the UAV, but it can only be used under the ideal environment. And right now, our company actually is developing a UAV technology that is, can be used under the adverse atmosphere. So that will be a huge upgrade for the technology. And the secondly is our ge geographical coverage. Actually, we know that the current technology to, to detect the fire in the forest is quite short term, is quite short range. That will cost a lot if we, if we want to cover the large area of the forest. So we want to develop our geographical coverage into the medium range and the long range. That will save a lot of cost. Secondly, our strategy is to expand our technology into the China market. We know that the forest cover a large part in China, especially the north of the China. And if we can utilize our function into those forest area, that will generate a huge revenue for us. And actually, we know that uh, Calvin, the manager in our company, has a great social capital. So that it make it possible for us to utilize it into the China market. And to to facilitate our expansion of the market, we will recruit five more part-time staffs to uh, detect the specific, the specific area of our function and to provide the updated services for our system. Thirdly, we will, we will expand the use of our system into monitoring of aging of road bridges. As the material has supplied, the function of our system is not only limited to the detecting of the files in the forest, it can only detect the overheating of the power subs subs substations, the aging of the road bridges, and also the board control. So we will choose the most, uh, we will choose the road bridges detection as our first step into the new area of our system. Because the transportation development in China is quite rapid right now, and if we can combine the bridge development with our technology, that will be a very good uh, start for us to expand into a new area. And for the last but not least, we will raise three million US dollars at the end of the five years. As the material has said that we can have a great opportunity to raise up to seven million US dollars to develop our business. However, we found that actually we didn't need that kind of much money to into the recruitment of people or the research and development as the the past the data has shown that we only need one million US dollars to develop all the skills, all the technology. So we found that the three million USD is quite enough for us to to further expand our business. And what what kind of ways will we use our three million US dollars? My teammate Cindy will tell you about the medium term plan. And let's turn to the medium plan. And it's for five and 10 years in the future. And there are four parts. There are market, product, R&D, and business operation. For markets, in our medium plan, we will penetrate into the emerging economies, including like Malaysia, South and Central America, Africa, and Middle East. And considering that we have more experience on forest wildfire prevention field, we will focus a little bit more on Malaysia and Central and uh, South America, where there are more like uh, bigger coverage of forest. And uh, we didn't enter Australia at this stage because we think the cost is very too high, and the co the company need to pass a lot of technical requirement tests, which are very troublesome. As for the products, we will mainly introduce the IRL surveillance. Uh, system which can be applied for forest wildlife pre protect prevention and for the aging detection of roads and bridges and as well as the overheating power stations. We didn't include the border control services here because we think it's more politic related and which may bring some ex unexpected uh, troubles to uh, the company when they develop this kind of services. And the third part will be R&D. 
uh, with our first uh, surveillance system mature, we will start to develop our moni uh, condition monitoring system for oil and gas pipelines in this stage, uh, which will take about around one to two years. And then we will do tests and trials in mainland China and try to commercialize this system into mainland China. And as the last part is about business operation, because we uh, expand our business into some emerging economies, we need more people. So we will try to uh, gradually recruit six more uh, staff to work for us for a dealing with those foreign business. And at, at the same time, the company can uh, consider opening a few overseas office in order to deal with the, those foreign business more conveniently. And now I'm going to pass to Sherry to talk about long-term plan. Yes. So as Cindy has, as Cindy has already mentioned, in the, mid, in the medium term plan, we already did the R&D of the oil and the gas condition monitoring system. So after the R&D, in the long term, we need to use this technology into our business to generate profit. So the first thing we will do in the long term is to apply and expand the gas and oil condition monitoring system, this technology, to sell it to our customers, uh, especially to China and other, in other emerging markets in Asia Pacific. Because in the short term plan and the medium term plan, we have already expanded our, uh, our business to the other emerging markets, so which means we already have relationship there, so it would be better, easier for us to introduce our new technology to them. What's more, uh, as you can see in the tech, uh, as you can see in the material, there are three questions that the company asks as consultant. So I will answer those questions here. The first, the company asks, should the company penetrate into Australia or other developed country, developed market? And we think it shouldn't, because there are already fierce competition of the uh, critical infrastructure management in those markets, and it's no good to compete with them. And secondly, there are high cost of certifi certification, as Cindy has just mentioned. Just take Australia as example. The cost of get a verification to operate in Australia would be about 0.3 million US dollar, which is very expensive for the company. And third, it's because emerging market is already large enough for IRL to grow. So we don't think the company need to go to a developed uh, develop company, a uh, developed market. And the second question is, should the company develop its own installation and maintenance capacity? The answer is also no. Because we think it's, uh, the installation and maintenance is not the core competency of the company. Because installation and maintenance really usually needs a lot of people, like workers, to do the job. but the company is not labor intensive, it's a technology intensive company, so it's not the company's core competency. And also it will make the business more complicated if the company need to operate the in installation and the maintenance, which it will dilute the company's core competency. So we reject this proposal. And here, just for a summarize, here is a timetable for our short term, medium term, and long term plan. You can see in the short term, we will improve the current system and expand the forest surveillance system to other provinces of China, because currently it only applied in Guangdong province. And also we will start hiring more stuff. And in the medium term, we will start using the existing system to other area, other to other area like uh, monitoring the road and monitoring the heater and other uh, electricity generator, other than just in forestry. And also in the medium term, we will start R&D in the oil and the gas condition monitoring system, which the company has already said in its material that it, this is the next move they want to achieve. So in the long term, we can see after the R&D of oil and the gas monitoring system is completed, it can be used to the market to uh, other and uh, to China and also other emerging markets. So you can see that the whole feature of our plan will highly is that the success of a next term will really rely on the success of a term previously. Because our business is based on the funding and technology and our relationship with government. And that's all about our presentation. Thank you very much. Let's talk about the difference of different um, options or you know, venture down the road in the short term and long term. 
Um, how do you ensure the quality assurance that's going to be provided? You know, once you have used you know, start up in the short term strategy in the forestry to continue, you know, and not to be not to do, um, decrease in the quality um, since the company will uh, or will also be focusing on you know, developing medium and long term strategies over time. I mean, what is your quality assurance plan? How do you execute it? And what is the innovation of that? Uh, I would say uh, about quality assurance, yeah, this is a good question because quality assurance is a very crucial part for technology company like uh, IRL. Um, we think uh, the quality insurance is not that we, it's, it's like the fundamental, the fundamental element for our success because you know we the company started its business in China and you know in China it has to cooperate with the government and if you cooperate with the government you have to make them satisfied and to make them satisfied you have to have very good quality of your product so as as I already uh, said before our medium term and long term plan will really rely on the success of our short term plan and our success or short term plan is just uh, basically around building relationship with the government. So I would say the company would have very high motivation to increase its quality as better as possible because it's so crucial to its business. Uh, but for the exact um, actions to do that, I think the company, since, uh, since it entered mainland China and it will pass some testing and other uh, quality certifi certification, I think the company will also invest in R&D with the money, so all this will contribute to a higher quality of its, you know, uh, of its technology. And I want to add a little bit because uh, in the short term, uh, short -term stage, we try to like uh, apply this our surveillance system in mainland China, and during this period, we will get some customer feedback. And um, in this this short term stage, we didn't uh, try to develop new system, but only focus on our existing system and try to improve it to make it uh, mature. And then we changed to uh, develop the oil and gas uh, pipeline system. But it doesn't mean that uh, we will just uh, keep uh, we will not keep improving the first system in medium and long term uh, stage. But just we may. Um, uh, invest some more uh, more in energy um, people and capital into a new system development so we will keep uh, improving our existing develop uh, system uh, in different stages so uh, I think in this way we can assure the quality um, actually actually we prepare a relatively long uh, R&D time period before we enter next stages because uh, in the short term period uh, it was uh, set for five years and Actually, if we want to develop the uh, UEA, I think, um, the, yeah, the, the long distance technology, it, only, uh, it is written in the material that it only takes less, less than one year to fully develop that technology. So actually, we uh, store like five years to um, maintain and enhance our uh, current product. And also, we decide to enter oil and gas field uh, only in the long run, so that would be 10 years later. And we spend the entire median term, like it was five years, uh, five to 10 years, uh, also five years to develop that technology. So we actually prepare a long time for R&D. Could you talk a little bit about the, the risks you see inherent in, in transferring your model from China, where you're very embedded to uh, Malaysia or South America, and how, what would you do to mitigate those risks? I think the main challenge we will face is the local problem. Actually, ac uh, you know that the ge geographical difference between the China, Malaysia, and uh, some other areas is quite different. And for uh, actually, we have only utilized our system in the China area. And maybe if we move our system into the India, we will face some local problem like the geograph geographic uh, geographic difficulty or some uh, government difficulty, I think that kind of problem we will face right now. Uh, but we will try to hire some local people as our, as our part-time staff or the cooperator, and they can help us to manage those local problems. And as for the system itself, because uh, it has short range, medium range, and long range detection, uh, three layers, uh, when they, the engineers do the design, they have already considered about these 
a factor. So they make they try to make their systems can be suitable for some uh, extreme weather condition or extreme like uh, uh, atmosphere. So I think it will not be a very big problem for them to uh, do a little bit adjustment to change uh, change the machine to fit in the local um, geographic situation. Putting aside the actual issues with the technology, in terms of your, your business model and, and uh, picking up on something you're saying, that you, you would intend to hire people locally and, and do it yourselves, or would you look to partner other firms when you went into Malaysia or South America? Yeah, we have considered like um, have a uh, have some joint venture with the local company or the local SI, with the local system interpreter. Um, but just for time limit, we didn't go deep to that to that part. But uh, but the general idea to your uh, to your question is that to go to the local uh, to go to other uh, emerging market outside of China, there will there will be just like many three kind of problems. One is the problem with the government or with the bureaucracy. Second is the technical problem with the geography, geographical things there, and uh, third would be like competition with with the local players. So we think the best thing is that we first do uh, do well in China and maybe get recommendation from Chinese government or or leverage on the relationship we already have to uh, other uh, other emerging market. Because if we directly go there without any relationship, it'll be very hard. But if we have some relationship like uh, reference from government to another country that would be much easier and we also consider um, co build up some cooperation or joint venture with the local company as well if we expand to other com countries yes. and in balancing the, the two sides of sort of speed to market and, and growth and the, the, the sort of more cautious uh, control of your uh, IP, the quality control points that you mentioned earlier. How do you balance those two things? What, what do you think is the, the, the more important factor for us at the, at the current stage of company development? Uh, actually, we are not uh, like, our plan is not that aggressive one, so we abandon to becoming a CSI for ourselves, but keep our core competency in the technology part. And, and when we expand our market into some emerging markets, uh, we're not. Uh, uh, have a very uh, aggressive plan or pave to, uh, I have to enter uh, how many markets in like five years, but uh, we will gradually adjust our strategy to make us fit in this environment. And as for SI, uh, actually we, person, uh, the company itself is not an SI. When they enter, uh, whichever market they enter, they need to cooperate with an SI to help the installation and maintenance problems with us. So um, as for the um, technology problem, we can deal, deal with this problem with our SI cooperation, uh, who are local um, companies that are more familiar with the geographical something stuffs, those those stuffs, and and as for um, we always uh, emphasize the quality. That's why we don't want to be SI ourselves. So um, uh, and also the reason why we put so many time to for R and D with we would rather um, make ensure our quality uh, instead of. Um, pushing up our plan very quickly. So um, basically our uh, faith is that uh, only quality can make our brand uh, strong and to expand uh, markets more efficiently. So oh, and just yeah. one point to add. As you can see, um, actually though we expand to different <coughs> markets, but we use the same product or the same technology to expand to different markets. The first technology we're going to use to open up the other market is the forestry wild wildfire surveillance system. That system is actually pretty much the same in China and also in other markets. It's just that we we use this uh, we sell these products to foreign customers. But actually, um, the fact of uh, of a wider application of our technology will help us improve the quality of this technology or, or this product. So as I already said, we do not do the job of maintenance and installation and we do not compete with those um, uh, players in the developed countries. So we will just focus on improving our technology, this, this one technology, and to expand it to as many users as possible to emerging markets. Can I ask about competition? So currently you've got a, a cutting-edge product that's market leader. Uh, you touched a bit on the competition, and you're up against companies with, with 
between 100 and 800 staff. How, over a 20 year time frame, do you think that this company can keep ahead of the competition? Uh, so first, uh, can we say, uh, do you mean the competition all around the world or just competition within our target market? Because we do, in, we do not intend to compete we do not intend to compete with the players in the developed market. We just intend to compete first in China and then in the larger market. And as you can see in the material, uh, the material already identified three potential competitors against uh, the company, but they are not our direct competitor. Because the first two one, they have the technology of the short range um, inspection or civilian, but they do not have the mid term and the, the, the mid range and the long, long range um, civilian system. And for the third company as a competitor in the material, it's just a company that designed the UAV system, which will be used in this company's um, technology. So they may potentially become our competitor, but currently they, yeah, our, our business are just very different and it covers different areas. So I guess my question is aimed at how will you ensure that this innovation continues with a relatively slow scale uh, expansion of yeah, the organization? Uh, I think that uh, depends on different products. If, we, uh, talk, if we're talking about the civilian system that we uh, currently use for detection of wildfire, I think that um, the current uh, technology, uh, as long as we can develop the long distance and long range, that technology, I think this technology is relatively mature. So in this kind of uh, welfare detection, they, um, are, the technology can be mature and um, they, they, they can just apply, be applied to different places. So there will not be a, a huge space or huge potential of improvement. So in this area, there will not be uh, too much of a question whether we can keep to be the innovation, a very innovative leader. And in other fields, uh, I would say that it would only just depend on our R&D and just in them, it depends on how we execute and how we conduct our medium term strategy. And I would add one point is uh, we will apply for the patent protection, so uh, which would be, I think would be very useful for uh, keeping our innovations edge. And just like, um, we will not stop our R&D as they said, just like uh, Apple, uh, Apple company produce a lot of products and they updates very fast. And so uh, as for this kind of technology, it's, it's not like the mobile phone that you can update so quickly because uh, it's a, the trial and test for this technology will take uh, a, lo a longer time, but we we'll always keep uh, improving this technology, our system, and to uh, provide a, the best service to our customers. So um, I think combining with the patent and our continued improvement, uh, we, can, uh, we have the advantage to keep our innovation edge. Pick one up on your point. You're confident that you will have enough sales in the short term to fund what is quite an intensive R and D schedule that you have. Oh, actually, I would say the R and D, according to the imperial evidence, is shown in the material is not very high because uh, the company has already operated for about two or three years, but it's only cost um, one million. Just within one million, it's already built up this uh, initial system which they used. Uh, which the Guangdong province used. So, I would say based on this, um, based on this evidence, we don't think it will cost a huge money for R and D. I think maybe the price will within uh, the cost will within were about three million or something according to our estimation. And actually, you can find from our short-term plan. Actually, for the R and D cost, we just used to develop the existing technology. We didn't use much money to develop a kind of new technology that will cost a lot. That is why we w we don't want a aggressive one to develop our business in a huge stage in just five years. That's why we will develop the existing technology into the maturity stage, and then we will try to develop our technology to the gas and oil area, and that is our plan. And uh, I want to add this one point is our margin, according to the material, is very large. It's about 50%. So uh, if you can uh, successfully commercialize this the first system in mainland China, in 10 provinces, we, I think we can get enough profit to support our R&D. Actually, I think we do have some reason to have confidence in ourselves. 
uh, in ourselves. First, uh, as we have mentioned, that we, we do not really have a direct competitor in, in our current market. And also, the um, uh, forestry section in Milan, China, is estimated to be uh, 1.4 billion. And also, we, uh, because we have very close relationship with the Guangdong gov government, and also we have the um, reference from them, so it will be a huge advantage. And also, because we are the sole competitor and the leading and the leading company, so I would, I would say that we do have reason to have confidence in ourselves.